Ida for ignoring my partner after they forgot my birthday? As I sat in our dimly lit living room, surrounded by the deafening silence of a day that was supposed to be all about me, I couldn't help but feel like I was drowning in a sea of neglect. My birthday, a day my partner, Alex, had known about for 365 days, had slipped his mind. The realization wasn't just a punch to the gut it was a relentless, soul-crushing marathon that left me questioning every ounce of love and effort I'd poured into our relationship. And so, I did the only thing that seemed rational in my irrational state of mind I ignored him. Completely. Utterly. And now, as I reflect on those tumultuous days, I'm left wondering. Ida am I the asshole for my response? It started like any other day. I woke up early, the anticipation of the day ahead fluttering in my chest like a restless bird. I had dropped hints for weeks, from casually leaving birthday brochures on the counter to not so subtly singing happy birthday to myself whenever Alex was within earshot. But as the hours ticked by, and the silence from Alex grew thicker than the morning fog, my excitement curdled into disappointment. Maybe he's planning a surprise, I told myself, clinging to the last shreds of hope. But as dusk approached, and our apartment remained devoid of any celebratory signs, the truth hit me like a sledgehammer I had been forgotten. The first tear fell as I stared blankly at my phone, the screen a harsh reminder of the day's solitude. No messages, no calls, just an echoing void where love and acknowledgement should have been. It was then that I made my decision if I wasn't worth remembering on my birthday, then perhaps I shouldn't be bothered with remembering to interact with him either. Days blurred into an indistinguishable mess of emotions. Alex would come home from work, attempt to initiate conversations, and meet the wall of silence that had become me. At first, he seemed perplexed, then annoyed, and finally, concerned. Concern that, might I add, was expressed through half-hearted questions and lackluster apologies, further fueling my ire. One evening, as he entered the kitchen where I was mechanically washing dishes, he tried a different approach. Hey, what's for dinner? He asked, attempting a casual tone. I responded with a shrug, not breaking the rhythm of my dishwashing. The water was my solace, a constant in a world that seemed to have forgotten how to love me properly. Alex sighed, the sound hanging in the air like a challenge. Seriously, not a word? You're still mad about whatever this is? I turned off the faucet, the sudden silence more deafening than my ignoring him. You really have to ask? My voice was low, a barely contained volcano. He rubbed the back of his neck, a gesture of frustration I'd grown all too familiar with. Look, if this is about something specific, can we please just talk about it? The audacity. Specific? I echoed, my laughter bitter. You want to know what's specific? My birthday is specific. The date, the time, the year it's all very, very specific. And yet, here we are. The room fell silent once more, this time with a weight that seemed impossible to lift. It wasn't until the fourth day of our Cold War, while I was out running errands to escape the apartment's oppressive atmosphere, that I stumbled upon a small, quaint bookstore. On a whim, I stepped inside, finding solace in the musty smell of old books and the quiet hum of the store's ambience. It was there, nestled between self-help guides and romance novels, that I found the art of being seen. The title resonated deeply, echoing the unspoken pleas of my heart. As I delved into the book, I began to realize that my reaction, though extreme, stemmed from a deeper issue a longing to be seen, to be remembered, to be loved in the way I desired. It wasn't just about the birthday it was about the countless moments where I felt like an afterthought. Armed with this newfound understanding, I returned home with a sense of determination. The silence needed to be broken, but this time, on my terms. Alex was sitting on the couch, staring at the TV with a look of disinterest. I entered the room, the book clutched tightly in my hand, a symbol of my resolve. Alex, we need to talk, I said, my voice firm but laced with a hint of vulnerability. He turned, a mixture of apprehension and relief crossing his face. Finally, he murmured, standing up to meet me halfway. The conversation that ensued was not easy. It was a tangled web of emotions, apologies, and unmet expectations. I expressed my feelings of neglect, of being forgotten in both the grand gestures and the mundane moments. Alex listened, truly listened, for what felt like the first time in a long time. I'm sorry, he said, his voice cracking under the weight of his regret. I was stressed with work and, it's no excuse. You deserve better. I'll do better. In the days that followed, our relationship underwent a metamorphosis. It was as if we had emerged from a long, dark winter into a spring of newfound understanding. Alex made a conscious effort to be more present, to see me in the way I yearned to be seen. And I, in turn, learned to communicate my needs more effectively, to not let the silences grow into chasms. As for my birthday, Alex planned a belated celebration a quiet, intimate dinner with a cake that had a day late, but forever yours scrawled on it in messy, loving handwriting. 
It was imperfect, just like us, but in that moment, it was perfect. Am I the asshole for ignoring my partner after they forgot my birthday? Perhaps, by some standards. But in the grand tapestry of our relationship, it was a necessary catalyst for change. It forced us to confront the neglect, to rediscover the love and communication that had once burned so brightly between us. If there's a lesson to be gleaned from our tumultuous tale, it's that love is not just in the grand gestures but in the everyday moments of presence and acknowledgement. And sometimes, it takes a little silence, a little heartache, to remind us of the beauty in being seen, in being loved, and in loving in return. So, Ita? Maybe. But in the pursuit of love, understanding, and a healthy dose of humor, I do it all over again in a heartbeat.